everyone, and welcome to Where Does Food, a food history podcast that tells you about the history of food. I'm Elle, an aspiring food historian, and alongside me is... Your grandmother's favorite podcaster and food historian, uh, Tim. Ooh, I like that. And apparently your grandmother does too. Yeah, no, yeah. Your grandmother loves me. Listener, (laughs) hear me out. Your grandmother loves me. Big fan. Big fan. Check your grandmother's house. There's a picture frame of Tim in there. Yeah. Oh, I've been there. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. a testament then. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, And before anybody's like, oh, well, you know, my my grandmother passed. She lived a long life. Before anybody says that, um, then your mother. I'm your mother's favorite your food mother. historian. How about that? And if not, and your for father. Anybody who's a, and, and, and for anybody, you know what? Let me just round it off. I'm any <laughs> any guardian or person you in go. your family you that go. is uh, uh, of age, <laughs> I'm their favorite. <laughs> <laughs> any any parental guardian? Yeah, that's me. I'm there. Yeah, that's incredible. Me right there, Tim. Tim's the name. <laughs> Tim's the name. That's so great. So, Tim's the name. Uh, we're getting one of the best carbohydrates in the game today, on the block. I'm talking about pasta. Yeah, Italian hands. Like Everyone Italian. do your Italian. Even it. though pasta is not just Italian, it's like also Asian. Who cares? Who cares? Italian. <laughs> it's all the Italians. Yeah, I you know yeah. you look like the Godfather. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know my guy just getting pow pow while he's eating his spaghettios. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, spaghettios specifically. That's the most Italian dish there is. Chef Boyer. Boy R D, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's spaghetti O's. Oh (laughs) That's a terrible joke. I'm I need to cut the podcast off. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Go from the top but play the intro music over the top. (laughs) So Tim, do you enjoy pasta? Do I enjoy pasta? Well, L um Am I everyone's grandmother's favorite? I I think so, if I recall. Yeah, so of course I enjoy pasta. Enjoy pasta. pasta. You know? I love pasta. Who doesn't love pasta? Specific. I am privy to, uh, to Italian food in general. So, uh, I'm a really big fan of of the the work they do with pasta in that region of the world. But like I said, I know it's a pasta is like ubiquitous globally. But in general, shout out to the Italians. You've made your impasta before, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I have. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Your experience with that? Oh, it, well, you know, I uh, I part time as an Italian grandmother. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm talking about grandmas a lot in this episode. I have to cut a few of these. <laughs> so, uh, no bullshit. L. The other day, I made uh, I made a I made a mushroom and onion risotto. Ooh, <laughs> with tomato confit topped with Parmesan uh, fresh cracked pepper and lemon juice, and I uh, paired Top it with off. a. Off, okay. I paired it with a lovely Pinot Grigio, uh, which oh. is a nice dry white wine, um, but it's you know it's got a good balance because of well the tomato. So the risotto dish itself, right, is like you know, it, it's pretty savory, but the. Uh, tomato confit was to cut that the lemon juice kind of cuts through that uh, that cheese and all the extra kind of starchiness and the savory umami you know savoriness from those uh, mushrooms and the white wine pairs with that uh, because it also has that sort of brightness to it which is nice incredible um yeah again italian as fuck and then (laughs) uh And then the next, not the next morning, but the next night, uh, I also had tiramisu for dessert Delicious. that night. Okay, um, fabulous. So the next, so the next night, uh, I have some risotto left over or whatever. I still got some wine left over um, and some tiramisu left over. And I was like, I don't know if I really want the risotto. So um, like a divorced Italian woman, I sat down and just drank <laughs> Pinot Grigio and ate a whole tiramisu, pretty much. Just a whole <laughs> fucking K, like a whole fucking serving of it. <laughs> like just a big ass portion of tiramisu. Uh, oh and man, drank I love too that much for you. of the wine. Yeah. So uh, no, but I, yeah, I've made my own pasta. You know, it was okay. <laughs> when you do something that's technical, like one time, 
it's always kind of like, all ah, right, <laughs> like it, it gets cool. It's fun to do. I just haven't, I've never really done it again. Cause, uh, honestly, I think the dried pasta is fine. And I think the par cooked stuff that you can get now is, is really solid. So, um, it is, yeah. I think, yeah, for the most part, I think it's fine just to use that stuff. And if you don't want to waste your time making fresh pasta, it's okay. Don't beat yourself up about it. You'll be all right. No, it's definitely like, it's, I don't know. I feel like it's super misleading because you see videos of, of it and it seems like a very like straightforward, seamless process. And it's like, mm, yeah, to I mean, extent. I think it is. I think it is. But like, you know, there's texture that you have to kind of understand right. and know, you know, the pasta rollers. It takes a little bit of it takes more than like I'm not good with it. Practice. Like I'm not good in general making like pasta because I've only done it once. And, right. I, and I was like, OK, that's cool. Like. So, you know, it does take time. I mean, there's a reason why you have people that, like, do that shit day in, day out. Yeah, and crush no, I agree it with that. All the time. Like, I think most be- I think it's fun. Like, if you're into cooking, I-, I would suggest trying it, of course. Like, if you like cooking, oh, yeah, go for it. You should always go for always try any, it. Big, any big project like that if you actually enjoy cooking. Like, fucking A. Try your best at doing anything. You know, if it's a big kind of cooking project, try it out. See if you like it, if it's worth it. Enjoy it. Or if it's not, there are plenty of things that I talk about all the time. And I'm just like, it's just not necessarily worth it. Like making your own ketchup, not worth it. (laughs) 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 Just buy ketchup, guys. It's not any, and you know what? Any restaurants doling out house made ketchup, go fuck yourself. (laughs) I don't need your house made ketchup. Thanks. (laughs) You know who does it well? Heinz. (laughs) Heinz. Heinz. <laughs> Heinz. They crush it, actually. They've been doing it for a uh, lot of years. <laughs> so, you know, some people just, you know, some people get it. Yeah. That's my long-winded take on, on food again. And making pasta. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, per the internet, there are approximately 350 different types of pasta. So on a scale of 1 to Jeez. 350, Tim, what would you rate pasta? What am I going to rank past that? Piesta. I think I'm going to go 275. 275. Give some context for that. Uh, I really adore pasta. But again, it's one of those things that I don't always have. I mean, I, like, I think I used to have it a lot more than I do now, to be completely honest. Yeah. I, I probably used to eat pasta a lot more than I know than some I college do I had it a lot, yeah. Yeah, because um, it is cheaper and it's a nice, easy mm-hmm. uh, thing to make. Yeah. Um, but I do like it. It's a good place to be at. I'll take that. That's a good. That's a good starting point. So let's roll it back a bit. Let's talk. Let's talk about pasta because you you mentioned dry pasta. Yeah. Before we talk about pasta, L, is there a thing we need to do? We need to talk to our sponsors. Yeah, we need to talk to our sponsors. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the ad section. I'm here to tell you real quick about. Anchor by Spotify. You may have heard us talk about Anchor at the end of our episodes is because Anchor is the platform we use to distribute our podcasts. It's totally free. It helps us distribute our podcasts to different platforms. That's how we're on Apple Podcasts. That's how we're on Google Podcasts, CastBox, you name it. They've helped us do that. You can record directly on the app, on the webpage. They don't even need a super fancy setup. It's super straightforward totally free so download the anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started on your podcast or whatever you like to do all right guys enjoy the rest of the episode hey there it's your host tim stopping the podcast to tell you about an awesome deal that you can get through rep sports rep sports is a supplement company so they help supplement people's workout lives they have proteins pre-workouts post-workouts recoveries they have all types of supplements over there so go check them out and Fill out that stack. I know you're getting low. I can feel it. My stack's getting low. I'm about to do me a shop as well. You can also get mine and L's favorite energy drink, Raise Energy. I'm telling you, one can gets you through the day. Not a problem. Raise Energy is fantastic. No crash at all. So if you go to repsports.com and use the code WDF15, you can get 15% at checkout. Again, WDF15, you get 15% at checkout, and you also get to support this podcast and support your workout routine, man. Go do it. Now enjoy the rest of this podcast that we love doing. We had a pasta course, and then we had a meat or a fish. Thanks, sponsors. No, uh, so let's... <laughs> yeah. 
Appreciate the that. sponsors are curious about pasta now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so pasta is a type of food typically made from an unleavened dough of wheat flour mixed with water or eggs and formed into sheets or other shapes, then cooked by boiling or baking. Durham re- wheat is usually what you're more than likely going to see, what you're probably used to seeing. Durham wheat that we talk about pasta is when we're, is when we're referencing that. Um, to Tim's point earlier, so you have rice flour, sometimes even legumes, beans, lentils. Um, those are also used in place of wheat flour to yield a different taste and texture as well as a gluten-free option. They also use that for like protein-fortified pastas as well. You see that a lot. And also, I'm getting ahead of myself, but also now we've seen like how pasta has definitely evolved to we see a lot more um, vegetable-based pastas. Yeah, which yep, that's is, true too. Yeah, like delicious like so good um but that's something another way that we've seen this evolve from just dough yeah let me <laughs> uh, i will i will just say that um oddly enough that berea does make the best like to me anyway they make the best like protein sort of fortified pasta okay um it's it. in a, it's in a yellow it's in a yellow box i think they use flaxseed as a big Ooh, thing in, okay in there ingredients and then let me double down and say that like any of the red lentil pasta is fucking disgusting it cooks like shit and wow. it tastes awful so let me just get that out of the way <laughs> something about something about lentils by themselves is fine but then you put them in a pasta shape and they cook like mush and taste like asshole so uh stop making that everyone stop making red lentil pasta call it call it now never do it again take it off the shelves burn it I don't know. Use it as an energy source. I don't know. Get rid of I it. I didn't realize you felt so strongly about this. Get rid of it. Well, it's terrible. It's a fucking, uh, like, a way to ruin such a good thing in life. <laughs> <laughs> but you fucking hate when health trends do that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and and, pe- and do, people actually. are like, oh, but you can, it's like, it's like a, it's a great alternative. It's like, no, you're not. You're fucking like, no. sad and hungry. So it tastes okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't have the thing you want. So it's like, we're going to, yeah. we're going to take this substitute but we're not gonna be happy about it we're gonna trick my brain yeah. to think it's good but it's not I mean, it's not so like yeah it's not and so like if you are vegan or vegetarian and maybe you are genuinely struggling to like get some extra protein in your life Bria's protein plus yellow box uh not a sponsor but not shout out to them because it to to me it tastes about as close and texture wise it's almost no different and uh, probably not different at all. And taste-wise, it's just about as close as you can get. It's neutral enough to still act like um, That's what pasta is supposed to be. That's important. Yeah. No, I agree with that. <laughs> it's a it, pasta is a sauce carrier, baby. It's not, it's that's what it is. You know what I mean? It's meant to bring sauce and flavor to your fucking pie hole, uh, much <laughs> like bread does. <laughs> so, so you know, Those- that's my take. I'm chatty tonight i apologize no i appreciate your passion about this yes so yeah bread and pasta both have those things in common sauce okay so like i said tim mentioned the dried there's also fresh pasta too so most dried pasta it's produced commercially via an extrusion process although it can be produced at home i was like what is an extrusion process tim it consists of forcing soft mixed ingredients through an opening and perforated plate or die designed to produce the required shape the extruded yeah. food is then cut to a specific size by plates. That's it. Yeah, like like a Play-Doh playset. <laughs> Literally like a, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you were in extrusion factory when you were a kid. It's just like <laughs> purple, blue, yeah, the, pink. Yeah. Burr. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's fun. Okay. Uh, dried pasta is mainly shipped over to farther locations and has a longer shelf life. The ingredients required to make dried pasta include semolina flour and water. Eggs can be added for flavor and richness, but not needed to make the dried pasta in and of itself. So that's, I mean, a key a key there. Yeah, but yeah, again, that's... don't need it. The ingredients to make dried pasta, like I said, usually include the water, semolina, and the egg for color and richness in some types of pasta, and possibly vegetable juice, such as spinach, beet, tomato, carrot, herbs, or spices, and color and flavor. Yeah, we're talking, we talking about that tri-colored rotini, baby. Let's tri-color. go. <laughs> Um, essentially the dough is passed into a laminator, it's flattened into sheets, and then it's compressed by a vacuum, and then they take out all the air bubbles, and then they dry out the dough so there's only about 12% moisture in it. Yeah. Key. Shit lasts for ages. Key, yeah. 
Uh, then it, the dough is processed to a steamer to kill any extra bacteria that it may contain, and then it's shaped to be into like whatever pasta shape you want, and then boom, it's going to be shipped out. That's it. How fucking how fucking incredible is the world we live in, man? I mean, fucking a. It <laughs> like Jesus Christ, dude, that's insane. It's in- that's so insane. And you have to think about like how many, how much dough they're going. I should like should have double checked this, but like how much dough that these, just in specifically, yeah. we could just even go for like these bigger box like pasta making companies. Like how much dough they go through on a yeah. on a daily basis. Bro, daily I like basis. I honestly cannot stress. I can, honestly cannot stress enough how much dry pasta was just like. It's like I mean, it, it legitimately is the reason why I'm alive. <laughs> like, <laughs> when I was like. When I was, one, grew up poor, we had, you know, dry pasta all the time, but when I was, like, Mm post-college, and my fucking food budget per week was $20, are you fucking kidding me, dude? The amount of processed food, every processed food I bought, it was just, like, it literally was, like, 99 cent Hunt's canned tomatoes for the red sauce, and then it was, you know, 99 cent box of pasta, like the, like the one-pounders or whatever. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. that make like not that uh I almost said McDonald's sheesh uh that uh Ben fries Walmart that Walmart sells they sell like their great value version and they're all like twenty five twenty five cents cheaper which was the the fucking whole thing when you have twenty bucks to live on for the week <laughs> while you're waiting for your fucking paycheck mm. to half of it go to rent um the uh yeah so I mean that's I lived off that shit that and specifically I remember this I was vegetarian at the time. It's partially to save money. <laughs> uh, specifically, the Jiffy vegetarian uh, cornbread box and uh, like canned beans. So the canned beans, 80 cents. The Jiffy vegetarian cornbread box, 88 cents. Incredible. So it was like okay. Those two things, it was good. Those two things, uh, 99 cent cans of tomato sauce and 99 cent box pasta. That's what I lived on <laughs> for like too long. <laughs> <laughs> too long. Every week is the same shit. That's incredible. Yeah, it goes yeah. far though. When you got when you got twenty bucks, that shit goes far. The only other things I would buy was like peanut butter and jelly and bread. That was it. That's yeah. You, I mean, dry pasta, baby. <laughs> pasta. <laughs> shit's a fucking world. Shit's a world wonder. Don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like you said, that's a lifesaver. Yeah, yeah that's fucking crazy. And it's crazy. I don't know. Just hearing you describe like how that whole fucking thing functions. Like people thought of that and made it happen, and we doesn't. We don't skip a fucking beat thinking about it. Mm-mm. <laughs> we don't even think about it. Pasta's just on the shelves. We expect it. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I didn't even think about what this journey was going to look like when I first started. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Of course it makes sense, but it's like, oh yeah, wow. All of this yeah. is happening. It's yeah. one of those, it's just one of those commodified foods. It's the right night and it's one of those commodified foods. So I'm, I'm, I'm being a little ranty about that, but either way. <laughs> <laughs> Dried pastas are best served in hearty dishes like ragu sauces, soups, and casseroles. Delicious. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's switch it up. Let's go to fresh pasta. Fresh pasta is traditionally produced by hand, sometimes with the aid of simple machines. Fresh pastas are available in grocery stores, but they're produced commercially by large-scale machines. Um, Fresh egg pasta is generally cut into strands of various widths and thickness, depending on which pasta it's to be made. So you've got, like, think of, like, a fettuccine size or, like, a lasagna size, like, thicker pieces yeah and it's best served with meat cheese or vegetables to create filled pastas such as ravioli tortellini and cannolis i said cannolis but it can it's not can can cannelloni but it's not cannolis cannelloni it's not it's not i was gonna say yeah but i was like cannolis but (laughs) (laughs) i just wanted to go the 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 i all right fresh eggs we just want we just want cannolis i did yeah no it's really what happened here Listen, ravioli, turtellini, cannolis, come on. Fresh egg pasta is well known in the Piedmont region and the Emilia Romagna region in northern Italy. That's what's up. That's what's up. So I love fresh. Yeah, I love fresh pasta. It also fucking cooks in like a minute and a half. <laughs> oh yeah, no, we really yeah, it's yeah. very fast. Um, common yeah. forms of this pasta include the long and short shapes, tubes, flat shapes, sheets, miniatures for mm-hmm. soups, and then obviously those meant to be filled or stuffed. Delicious. And yeah, then uh, especially yeah. your decorative shapes. Bro, man, one of the most satisfying things in the world is just watching like pasta making making videos. <laughs> yes. Just seeing people like seeing people just like form the pastas uh, with their hands and shit. Like, I'm so big mes- shells. Mes- you see people mes- fucking like yeah. juice. 
That's crazy that that's done by hand. Every, like that's insane. Every time I see a pasta <laughs> making video, I'm like, I want to try making. I like, I want to try that. That yeah. specific process Look, right there. <laughs> yeah, like fettuccine. Rolling the dough like backwards. Cool. Yeah. Like fettuccine's cool. It's like cool, you know. I just uh, you know, flatten it out, cut it into strips. Not a big deal. Uh, but the fuck, yeah. So many different shapes, like tortellini and just like the fact Brigatoni, that pin it, yeah, and, yeah. The fact that those get done by hand is crazy. Very cool, though. Very cool. Very exciting. That's a good form of uh, talk about like woodworking, but it's just like pasta making. Is there like I feel yeah. like there has to be a specific name for it? Anyways, um, Tim, <laughs> just kidding. We got science time and word time back to back. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm- oh man, that's a lot of editing. Which one's coming first? <laughs> They're super quick though. Uh, word time. Which one? Wh- wh- word time. Okay. Word time. The word pasta comes from the Italian pasta, which in turn uh, <laughs> from the Latin pasta, which comes from the Greek word for pasta or barley porridge. So okay. So pasta, 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 barley porridge, pasta. Yeah. That yeah. Nice. So shout out to the Greeks, but like not totally. Because again, it's barley porridge. Yeah. But so we'll give them that. Okay, that was word time. See, that was it. Now we're going to science time. Science time with the science time. Science time. Starch gelatinization and protein coagulation are the major changes that take place when pasta is cooking in boiling water. Protein and starch competing for water within the pasta cause a constant change in structure as the pasta cooks. And that's science time. Fun. Yeah, I thought that was really fun. Plus, I was like, I want to say the word coagulation. Yeah, that's what we love. You're probably wondering. You've kind of talked about it, but like, where's where's pasta come from? Where does it originate from? Yeah, where does pasta get in the canoe? It's gonna be a long ride. Okay, we're getting in a canoe, and we're going back in on the on the river time, (laughs) Um, (laughs) and we're going. And we're going backwards, baby. And we're going backwards, baby. Uh, and we're going backwards. You think we're rowing to and Rome? This is against. Th- listen, this is against current, but we got muscles. We got muscles. We'll get there. We got back muscles. We're not going to Rome. We got brain muscles. We got some groovy brains, baby. Let's go. Oh yes, groovy brains. That's going on a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> is it? I don't know. That could be like the after dark, after dark after collection, the groovy, brain. the festival collection. Yeah. Okay, there we go. The festival collection. <laughs> Tim, we're not going to Rome. I know we go there a lot for origin stories. Yeah. We're not going there this time. Not so That's fast. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, but but be res- remiss to mi- to say Roman era references to anything resembling pasta are scarce and that the dish probably took hold in Italy as a result of extensive Mediterranean trading in the Middle Ages. Oh, so we're back in the Middle Ages. We're back in the Middle Ages. But there's a fun little <laughs> this made me giggle. There's a there's a legend that one Marco Polo, yeah, that Marco Polo, the explorer. What up, buddy? Uh he Whoa, dude, the fact that Marco Polo, this is his inaugural episode and we're like Two million years in, we're grizzled fucking veterans now. Like that kind of blows my mind. I'm not gonna lie to you, <laughs> Mark Opal. I know. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah. Like we're this is season 37. <laughs> we're on our downslope. We never even had a peak, really. <laughs> <laughs> Marco Polo is just now making it in. Good for him. Marco Polo. <laughs> yeah, he's just not making an appearance in the in the game. They say that he actually imported pasta from China. So you're referencing like the rice yeah. noodles and that. Yeah. So different type of, I would say like the noodles that we associate with pasta, but it's technically pasta. The same idea. Oh, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's still pasta. It's the same yeah. idea. Um, but obviously for this episode, we are leaning heavily towards the Italian side of things. But so yeah. the truth actually to that is yes, noodles did come from China, but I assumed not from Marco Polo, uh, and he's also not also, the one that brought it. Yeah. Um, also, big assumption that Mark. I didn't even think of that guy. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't either. Um, but it's believed to be that the Marco Polo story was actually just originated in the 1920s or 1930s in an advertisement campaign for a Canadian spaghetti Jesus company. Fucking cool. Which I thought you'd appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> so like I don't I yeah the amount like it's just, like it's one food being like 
its origin being theorized through an adver- advertising campaign, there's it's one too many. But the fact that this is probably like what the third or fourth or whatever the fuck I know Chips was the one that comes to mind. Like Chips' whole origin story was just like a fucking like mar- like a newspaper marketing ploy. Uh, <laughs> incredible. <laughs> I want to note that the story came from like Canada, the Canadian spaghetti company, but it was for a. <laughs> It was for a publication for in the United States called the Macaroni Journal, which was trying to promote oh. pasta in the United States. So I, yeah, I just had to, I just had to throw that out there. But yeah, that's um, wonderful. Yeah, uh, that's good. what a what a wonderful historical twist. <laughs> Every time, <laughs> just like pasta. Every time. Zing! All right, uh, it should be mentioned. Second century AD Greek physician Galen mentioned Itrion, a homogeneous compound made of flour and water. The Jerusalem Talmud records that yttrium, a kind of boiled dough, was common in Palestine from the 3rd to 5th centuries AD. The Arab world is credited with developing noodles based on ground durum wheat, the first of Mediterranean-style pastas. The thicker noodles were called rishta or yttria, and angel hair noodles were called the sharia, sorry, sharia or fidwash. With the expansion of the Muslim world across the Mediterranean and Asia between 750 and 1100 CE, it accounted for the appearance of this type of paste, pasta paste, from this type of pasta from Iberia to India. So there's our movement yeah. that occurred. And now and again, you were saying, and yeah, and you were saying the Middle Ages is what causes it to get to <laughs> to uh, Europe and stuff. Yes, not Marco Polo. Not yeah, not Marco. of course. Uh, and I mean, obviously, at this time, we've talked a little bit about it. There's a lot, uh, like it's a it's a really long period of history. Mm-hmm. That whole, like it's like from the fucking like fourth or third uh, century to like the seventeenth or something, or like sixteenth yeah. or something like that. No, essentially, it's a yeah, big ass. So you had uh, wars. <laughs> There's so much movement there. that was happening in that, yeah, in that side yeah. of the world. So like yeah. you have you have that sort of like the religious sort of battles going on. Uh, tons of stuff for the plenty of of food to travel around and make its way. Um, I feel like, I just feel like a lot of times when we talk about that stuff, we just, you know, we say growth or traded, things like that. Um, It's important to note that sometimes this shit was just like, sometimes this shit was just like fought. Uh, there were just it was literally fought, fought yeah. No, there were wars. Yeah, there was occurred. fought at, and then like, it was osmosis through, <laughs> um, <laughs> through conflict, essentially. Diffusion. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, n- not to be like, not to be like, oh, they colonize it. It's like, sure, maybe a little bit, but like, Definitely. just in general, <laughs> just in general, like sometimes things pass along that way as well, especially with such a long time period. Absolutely. No, it's, well, and yeah. especially with the time period that we're referencing, I mean, conquering was pretty much how yeah. things were, I mean, yeah. yeah. We're fast forwarding a little bit though, to your point, we're, we're hitting around the 13th and 14th centuries, and this is when pasta products are dated in Italy. Uh, in the first century AD writings of Horace, Lagana were fine sheets of fried dough. This is the first iteration of lasagna. From the 13th century, references to pasta dishes like macaroni, ravioli, gnocchi, vermicelli crop up with increasing frequency across the Italian peninsula. And in the 14th and 15th centuries, dried pasta became popular for its easy storage. This allowed people to store pasta on ships when exploring the New World. The city of Naples and the surrounding region, including Sicily, saw a surge in production in pasta in the 17th and 18th centuries. Yeah, right? Crazy. Beginning in the 17th century, Naples had rudimentary machines for producing pasta, later establishing the kneading machine and press, making pasta manufacturing cost-effective. So, yeah. 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 Was, yeah. Um, I just want to just clarify, because every time I like throw out a... Uh... A thing. I can either do an aside in the edit or I can just say it now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd rather just remember it now. Uh, the Middle Ages is from 476 CE, common era, to uh, the 14th century, which was the beginning of the Renaissance. So it was the fall of Rome uh, to the Renaissance. That's the Middle Ages. The um, fall of which Rome. I was, wow. I, was, I, was, I, was, I was a little close. I was pushing a little late on it. I kind of slid it down a little bit, but. That's what it is. That was still, Either way, back yeah. to yeah, back to the pasta making being cost Thank you effective. For that. Yeah, right. Um, initially, pasta was just eaten like as is. There was no sauce, so people would just eat that with their hands. Yeah, why, yeah. Wouldn't you? why would like yeah? Um, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't it? It wasn't until about 1790. There's a cookbook, 
La Picia Moderna by Roman chef Francesco Leonardo. I don't know why I said it like that. Um, he added tomato sauce into the pasta. And this is Sm- like everyone started using a fork to eat pasta because you couldn't man. eat it. You can just eat pasta with tomato sauce. I mean, you could. <laughs> you could, just through your hand, but no, come on. These are refined people. We've got places to be. Oh, wait. That's eh, fine. Whatever. Pasta sauce. All this, is, this, this is my nihilist coming out. Who gives a shit? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Who gives a shit? Who, Who gives, gives a shit? shit? Tomato hand or not? Tomatoes. No. Um, <laughs> so back to more innovation. In the 1800s, water mills and stone grinders were used to separate semolina from the bran, which initiated the expansion of the pasta market. That's what's so. And then here we go. Pasta production expanded. Say that five times fast. Pasta production. <laughs> Possibly expanded in the 19th century and pasta makers popped up across the country. In 1859, Joseph Topitz founded Hungary's first pasta factory in the city of Pest, which he worked with steam machines. It was one of the first pasta factories in Central Europe. And then by 1867, Boutini Company in Tuscany was established, was an established pasta manufacturer. During the early 1900s, artificial drying and extrusion processes enabled a greater variety of pasta preparation with larger volumes export. So this say is pasta, yeah. say pasta preparation five times fast. <laughs> this is this is where we're starting to uh, to make it hot now. Um, when colonists brought to America the English practice of cooking noodles at at least one half hour and then smothering them with cream sauce and cheese. Sounds sounds kind of okay. familiar, right? Yeah. Hey, remember Thomas Jefferson? Yeah. Yeah, I think I know a thing or two about him. Yeah, and he's credited for, like, in theory, bringing over mac and cheese from France, but we know that's not true, and it's actually his chef, James Hemming. Yeah. Who introduced yeah. introduced uh, America to mac, mac and, and cheese. Yeah. yeah. Mac and cheese. Mac yeah. and cheese. Um, the first industrial pasta factory in hey. America. Hey. Hey. That's a good episode. That's a great episode. You guys should go listen to Where Does Mac and Cheese. <laughs> Uh, so the first industrial pasta factory in America was built in Brooklyn. Shout out Brooklyn in 1848. Shout out to Brooklyn. Uh, it was a Frenchman who spread his spaghetti strands on the roof to dry in the sunshine and powered his machine with one horse. Which was okay, that's impressive. what's up. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> just a Frenchman. Th- you said a Frenchman, right? It was just a, Frenchman. a Frenchman. Yeah, Frenchman just fucking throwing his nudes on his roof, man. That's yeah, not a big deal. That's not a big deal. He was like, by the way, not a big deal. Uh, in 1904, the National Pasta Association was formed, and the National Association of Macaroni and Noodle Manufacturers of America had also formed. Yeah, dues were five dollars. How many associations are we up to now, man? Like forty-seven. Like for- <laughs> There's more. No, so many, asso- so many associations. <laughs> <laughs> so from this point, we're adding pasta companies into uh, into the mix. So um, we've got Anthony Gliola, Vincenzo La Rosa, Antonio Morano, and John Mobilio. Uh, introduced in 1928, Chef Boyardee. That was launched by Ettore Biardi. Uh, canned pasta is uh, now a household name. They got Kraft Mac and Cheese in 1937. Boom. Chef Boyardee. Shout out to the chef, boy. <laughs> Shout that's, out to... that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Shout out to the fucking goat. <laughs> I also want to say that his last name, so like Boyardee, well, I don't know if there's like a Mandela effect on this, but like Boyardee, B-O-Y-A-R-D-E-E. That's like on the can. Yeah. But the guy who launched yeah. it, it's his. he spells his last name B-O-I-A-R-D-I. But like. Wait, you're saying there's a, wait, you're saying there's a Y on the can? Oh, uh, yeah. It's a Y on the can and then I, two E's. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think I ever looked at the spelling of it. I, ever. I Ever. The only reason I'm like, wait a sec, because I just, yeah, the guys who- it does, feel, like, it does feel awkward, though. I get what you're saying. It does feel awkward. But I don't think the human mind is good at recall. I know the human mind's not good at recalling things, <laughs> so I'm just assuming that it's always been that way. Um, we'll go with and it. And we just want it to be another way. We'll go with it. We'll go with it. Um, yeah. Um, no, dude. I th- first of all, I'm not done giving Chef Boyardee the shout out. Uh, first of all, <laughs> that that shit's incredible. It's, it's awful, but the fact that you can just like pop a can open and just eat it fucking raw, cold, baby, it's <laughs> like absolute like a just a gross piece of shit. Incredible. Oh, yeah, it's great, man. 
It's fucking wonderful. What is that? What is that meat ravioli? What's that meat in there? Don't worry about Who it. Cares? Who cares? Don't worry about Who it. Who cares? Don't, don't worry about it. It's in a sweet red sauce with fucking super, super soft super <laughs> ravioli. Super sweet been, red sauce. Oh, my God. Because they've been soaking in that red sauce for 27 years. That's right. Chef Boyard, every Chef Boyardee can is at least 27 years old. It's still <laughs> That's rolling. That's how the production works. It ages like wine, you know? It's just, it's always a, a few years behind, but a few years for them is 37. Um, and, <laughs> and it's a meat mush thing in the center. Mm-hmm. And same with their meatball one. Have you ever had their meatball, spaghetti meatball? No, what I think I've just ever had their ravioli. I think it's just called spaghetti what the meatball. What is that meatball? The, the fucking meatball Meatballos? is the same texture as the meat and the ravioli. It's, yeah. It's terrible. Absolutely. Either way. But it's still, yeah. Shout out to the goat. So, it kind of brings me to this point of just the manufacturing help that pasta got just throughout its process. So from the 17th century, industrial pasta production was developed with the use of machines called a torchio and a mechanical press to make noodles and vermicelli. Yeah. Paul Jacques Mayun was a French scientist who brought the trade of vermicelli to Paris he also brought the industrial really, product. <laughs> yeah, um, the industrial. You really, you, you really got the short end of the stick having to announce all these fucking French ass. All names. the Italian <laughs> names, all the French <laughs> names. Like we already know, I'm terrible. I'm terrible at this, and I'm like, we're gonna lean in, but like, it's still yeah. not. Uh, it's still not. So like, apologies. Um, so he brought the techniques to Na- to Naples and to the French capital, and including kneading in the machine and the screw press. Later on, we had the box pasta companies pop up. So we'll take, like we were talking about earlier, Bria, for example. Um, in 1936, they created a six continuous presses. So for the first time in 1936, mind you, for the first time, they were combining the functions of a mixer, a kneader, and a press. And then from then, that's really what elevated them to be able to commercially yeah. ship out their products. And then by 1969... They had a new production pl- <laughs> nice. They had a nice product <laughs> they had a new production plant built in Parma that counted more than 120 meters of pro- of the production line producing 1000 tons of pasta a day. It's absurd God numbers damn. of production. Yeah, Jesus Christ. And it's yeah. not like grand scheme, it's like 40 years later. Not that long. Yeah. So no, it's I not. just I just think that's kind of crazy. I would be remiss to not mention Tim time to get saucy. Yeah, let's get saucy. Let's sauce it up. Northern Italy. Northern Italian cooking uses less tomato sauce and more white sauce. Um, Their meat-based sauce incorporates small amount of tomato concentrate and a green sauce called pesto, um, and that originates from Genoa. In Central Italy, there are sauces such as tomato sauce, amatriciana, arabia pita, and the egg-based carbonara. Tomato sauces are yeah. also present in southern Italian cuisine. In southern Italy, more complex variations include pastas paired with vegetables, olives, capers, or seafood. Um, we've got pasta yeah. alla norma, yeah. puttanesca. Um, puttanesca, baby. baby. Ooh, that shit's good as fuck. I've actually not ever had that. I love that. some puttanesca. I love puttanesca. It's got olives in it, mushrooms, no. green peppers. It's just hearty, fucking brilliant, vegetal, briny fucking red sauce, and it's just, oh, I love it. It's As great. I say, they have pasta corn le sardé, fresh sardines. What's up? You having that? Um, I have not had that specifically, but I mean, if it's good, it's good. Fresh sardines, probably good. It's like your brininess you're talking about. Yeah, you trust the process, man. If someone's talking about throwing sardines in something, you just gotta trust it. You just gotta hope that it's it's made well, <laughs> and that's it. I don't know what to tell you. Trust the Italians. <laughs> they know. They know what they're like, talking about. Bro, trust them. Just trust them. They know I their know flavors. What to tell you. Speaking of the sauces, though, Bartolomeo Scappi, a papal chef in the middle of the 16th century, had a recipe for macaroni alla Romanesca, which was similarly elaborate. Flour and breadcrumb dough was mixed with goat's milk and egg yolk and flattened into a sheet, which was then cut into thin strips with a roller cutter to make the noodles. After being left to dry, the macaroni was boiled for half an hour, strained, and covered with grated cheese, slices of butter, sugar, cinnamon, and pieces of provatura, a Roman variant of mozzarella cheese. Finally, the dish baked in the oven for half an hour with a little rose water so the cheese would melt. And while the macaroni was imbued with flavor of the spices, sounds okay, like that's mac. That's interesting. That, yeah, that sounds like the, the actual mac and cheese. 
Uh, Low yeah, key, the a rose bit. water. Uh, the rose water is gonna fuck with you there. A little bit, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, it sounds like a. I, I I will say that sounds like a lot of things. You said goat's milk was in that, which is typically a little bit tart, like tangier than cow's milk. Did you say cinnamon? Yeah, <laughs> the cinnamon was really what I was like, huh? That threw me for a and loop. And then the rose, and then and then rose water, which is pretty much just like perfume in a bottle. Uh, I was gonna say they were just throwing rose water and everything. I think back at that back in that time period. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, ah, you yeah. know, this I, needs rose water. But yeah, that's pasta. That's pasta. That's pasta. In a in a shell. Ha ha. Um. Ha ha. So you uh, what? That's pasta in a box. Um, I like that. 275. You're at 275. Yeah, I was at 275. Um, you know, pasta's going up to 300. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's going to go up to 300. I feel like that's that's a good, you know Take what, that. 301. Um, yes. That's a good number. 301's a good a number, number for pasta. Shout out to, to the history of pasta, truly. Fantastic. Wonderful. Um, shout out to the Italians. <laughs> and shout out to Marco Polo for making an appearance. Congratulations, you <laughs> made it in. Even though, even though we debunked your uh, whole thing right away, <laughs> incredible, right away. L, we're gonna do our right. favorite last two segments of yeah. the podcast. Um, my favorite parts, Tim's favorite parts. Um, I gotta maybe create jingles for this. There's so many jingles, though. I don't want to jingle everyone out. You know what I mean? You don't want to have <laughs> like 47 jingles in a podcast. It's just like God, fucking tryhards. Am I right? Um, <laughs> Uh, my favorite parts is the Marco Polo part. Easily, that's the best part of the whole podcast. Shows up put out of nowhere. Dub- yeah, put it out in WDF history. Put it down. Uh, it's it's up there. I adore that so much. Like ten out of ten. It's got everything I like. Fake history, capitalism, <laughs> pasta. All three th- <laughs> things work in threes, and I couldn't trifecta. think of a third one. So <laughs> that's the trifecta. That's the trifecta of a good WDF story. It's uh. Fake history, capitalism, and pasta. That's that's what all good WDF moments have in them. L, what are your final thoughts? Yeah, so I think that... Um... That's great, L. Good final thoughts. <laughs> Lovely. Truly wonderful. You should give speeches, I think. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> that's really the articulate. end of the podcast. We're, we're done with this episode of Where Does Food, where a.k.a. Does this one's going to be called... Where does pasta? Uh-huh. Um, and now you know. Now you know where does the pasta. And guys, did you hear the music kick in? And did you hear it at the beginning? And did you hear it for the stingers? Well, that music is made with me in tandem with a good friend of ours, friend of the truly a friend of the podcast, not just us joking about being a friend of the podcast. <laughs> truly a friend of the podcast. Sure. Um, yeah. Austin. <laughs> yeah. Austin Martin. Burr, burr, burr. He's a good friend of the podcast. Helps us make the theme music. Has done so since season two, season three. Sorry, my apologies. Yeah, fuck you, Austin. You didn't help us in season <laughs> um, <laughs> since season three, so he's helped us with the last two. You can find him on Apple and Spotify under Meridian Sky. Um, he does instrumental music. It's fucking awesome. Just go listen to it. It's, fan- it's fantastic. Good time. And he really enjoys making music, so, you know, just go give him a listen because the efforts are there. So Absolutely. You know, just be nice. Just be nice. <laughs> um you can also find uh, us on Twitter at Where Does Food, on the Tweet Bot, on the Twitter Town, on the the Bird App, the uh, Bird App, the the uh, yeah. that's all I got. Uh, oh, L, yeah, yeah, where yeah. can they find you? Uh, yeah, still on Twitter at El Chapo with three underscores between L and the Chapo. That's what's up. That's, that's what's, what's up. up. And you can find you can find me um, in your grandmother's contacts. I'm number Whoa. one star, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Yes, I. That's that's right. I'm your grandma's favorite. That's what's up. Uh, <laughs> no, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Tim <laughs> underscore and underscore Winston. Uh, it is a joint account with uh, my dog because I don't use it. So Puppy. there you go. She does. She uses, she uses it. it. So yeah, y- you'll see. You'll see. She's Winston always making dances and stuff. Yeah. 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 She's hip. She's young. She's cooler than me. Um, <laughs> She's got designer shades to hide her face. Um. <laughs> wow. Thank you for that blast from the past. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, wow. I'm going to listen to that later. Thank you. 
<laughs> you can <laughs> find us at our website, wheredoesfood.com. We have all the episodes also posted there. Fantastic. You can also find us at anchor.fm forward slash, uh, yeah, forward slash where does, does, does food. Um, that's going to be RSS feed, all that fun stuff. We also have a supporter button on that homepage, which you can also find on our website. And you can just, you know, if you want to support us with money just for being charitable and nice, you can do that. <laughs> You know, five bucks a month, not a big deal. Buy us a coffee. We'll sit around. It helps us. Honestly, it just helps with back end stuff. You know, owning a domain costs a yearly thing. Publishing a thing costs a yearly thing. Website yearly thing. All that stuff is just like yearly fucking Jeez. pulls. So just little fees. And then the equipment stuff is, is also there. So if you feel like it, great, cool. If you don't, here's another way you can support us. Because let's face it, we don't all got fucking money. All right, including True. me and L. True. <laughs> so, L and I. Which one is it? I'm bad at English. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> you can. Uh, you can just give us a review. That's right. You can just spend 10 seconds giving us a review, and it's fucking free. It's easy. Well, free. it's time, so it's not free. Time is money. But either way, it's hey. 10 seconds, so it's like it's nominal at best. And you can do that. Super easy. Helps us with the algorithm. Whoop, whoop. Uh, <laughs> the other thing that you could do if you're truly just like, I don't even want to do that. Here's what you can do. You can invite people into your car, house, um, oh, yep. place of work, any area or space in which you control the locks on the doors. You can invite them in, lock all the doors, and play the podcast. Let them know. And you can just force them to listen to it. Nah. You know, I'm not saying kidnap anyone. But like, okay? I'm not saying do that. I'm not saying get some felony charges or anything. I'm just saying you have people over in your car and, and you know in your personal space, and you can control them from leaving. You know, maybe just throw it on, throw it on the door, start driving really quickly. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know. That'll support us as well because you know, it gets you know, us you know. into into people's ears, and that's the important. That's kind of how podcasts function and just make it in the world. Yeah, I think it's so. Going into people's ears. Mm-hmm. Well, I know video is like a big thing now, but go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's it, but it feels like it's it. I think that, I kind of yeah. just like in um, pilot. I don't, Ella, I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm kind of an empath. Um, and I just sort of intuit when I'm done with things. No, that's it. That's the shout out. That's my list. That's my checklist. Um, tell your grandmothers I said hi. I'm kidding. I've already done that. Uh, <laughs> again, in their contacts, texting them all simultaneously right now, right now. while podcasting. I'm a fucking god. Um, we'll see you, I don't know, in a couple weeks or whatever. Have <laughs> a good time. 